The next order of business is to open up a rigged project file inside of After Effects and register it as a queue template in our account. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is click on the templates view and get out of all of this. I'm just gonna hit okay, hit cancel here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is open up a new project that I've been working on that has some data that's already connected. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is open up that project file. Let's see, open recent, name cards, and open that up. And let's go ahead and just make this fit. And basically this is just a um, project file that's linked to a photo and person's name and their date of birth right here. And then let's go to the beginning. And here we go, there's Adam Horowitz and there is Michael Diamond and then we've got Adam Yauk. So we know that this data is hooked up, right? It's already rigged. So what we wanna do is we wanna make this into a queue template. So let's go ahead and go back into queue, bring up the template here. And inside of After Effects in the Templator panel, we have a new button called Manifest. So let's go ahead and click on Manifest. And what we're gonna see is what the project manifest looks like inside of Q. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna say Create Manifest. And it's saying that this manifest is already exists in Q, and that's a problem. If that ever happens, even though you don't see it here, you might have created it and registered it at a different account or something like that. You can always do Delete Manifest and now it's been removed, click OK, and now we're gonna go ahead and create it again, and it's been created. So now if I go over to my queue account and I'm in my templates view, we should see this project file get listed here after it loads everything. So here's the name of the template, and just to review the manifest dialog and, and to explain what is going on here, the top area of the manifest shows you what data Templator has baked into the actual AEP files, XMP packets. So what that means is that if you decide to copy and paste the file, all the data up here travels with that copy. In other words, this data never gets removed from the file, even if you clone it, duplicate it, share it, however you wanna do with it. Down here, it's a, it's a representation of how Templator has rigged up everything. So if I go to the rig twirly here, you can see that I've got two text layers. And this one, for example, is the birth date. This is the index of the layer inside of its containing composition, which happens to be the birth date. This is the ID of the containing composition inside of the project. And then the layout shows you all the parameters that are set for that particular layer. So the rig represents what you've done to the layers inside of your After Effects project with the Templator settings effect applied. So the environment, this tells us a little bit about what is going on with the template, namely what are the fonts that are used inside of all of the dynamic layers and what are the effects that are used to create this template across all the layers and all the compositions and it tells you a little bit of information about where it was made, what the file name is, where it exists on the machine or on the satellite. And so that's important for when Templator actually begins to process jobs that are inside of the campaign. So this file path is actually pretty important. And then the host app tells you a little bit about what was the After Effects version that created this, what operating system we're on, and so on and so forth. We also have this thing called target, and the target is a default target. In the Templator world, a default target is the composition in your project file that you want Templator to render out by default. So if you don't have one, I don't believe that you'll be able to create a manifest. In other words, a manifest has to have a default target. Very important. And then it tells us information about what Templator version we are on and the Templator build number and whether or not it's enabled and whether or not it's also on the queue account, and, and sorry, the, the ID for this template in the queue account. So if I open this up, we can see that this ID here matches this ID here, and it also matches this manifest ID here. So that's how you know that your project file is gonna be in sync with queue. If I were to make changes in my project file, I'd have to go back into the manifest dialog and click update manifest. 
And the only way that update manifest is gonna work is if inside of the XMP packets of the file, this matches one of your templates that exists inside of your Q account. Now let's look at how this is represented inside of the Q dashboard. What's pretty cool is, you know, you have all the information about the unique ID and the authoring environment and then the, you know, the authoring information, but we can see which layers have the templator settings effect applied to this template, right? So, and under the dynamic layers heading, we can see that we've divided the layers up into types. We've got text, footage, solid, pre-comp, adjustment, and JSON layers. So for this particular template, we have just the birth date and the name, and then we have a photo, and those are the only three that we've got. And then the dependencies for this template are really important because this is gonna help you understand if you need to add new satellites, what templates require, what fonts and what effects. So here we have this dependency for Arial. Obviously most machines have Arial installed, but then the effects are also important. So you have to have these installed to make sure that Templator can process them. And then finally, we can see the raw manifest here. So it's all laid out for us in the raw. So that's effectively how you create templates within Q. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to click around to learn more and subscribe to our channel so you can learn the latest techniques for automating your video production process. I'm Ari Stefchansky, signing off. Thanks again.